and let's do it. of your presence changing and renewing us day by day we offer you our praise father for the blessing you bring in the outpouring of your love and grace day by day we offer you our praise <laughs>
understanding, even in the raging storms of life, and for the blessed assurance that you are Emmanuel, God with us. Day by day, we offer you our praise. Father, for the word that endures from generation to generation, and which teaches and challenges us from age to age, we offer you our praise. speak to lowly shepherds who entered time as a weak and helpless child who came to the likes of us in human form so that we may come to you we offer our praise O holy one our father born into human pain and joy open our eyes that we may see Christ's presence in our lives as we face the coming of this new year mother's womb before we were born you knew us you followed us through all our days you clothed us in your love and we offer you our praise 
Father, this coming year, as we grow in grace, and let us seek and find favor in your sight through Jesus Christ. Today, we offer you our praise. for God's word. Peter is going to come and read it to us this morning. And following the reading of God's word, the children up to and including third grade are invited to go to Cool Kids. The scripture reading for today is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. In that place, the word of God says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thank you, Peter. You may all be seated. Kids are on their way to Cool Kids. Mr. Tim is waiting for you at the door. I think this is going to be a hard crowd this morning. You uh, seem subdued and quiet. I'm not sure whether it is the weather the music, the fact that you've been keeping late nights, I don't know. It just seems like you're all... Okay, no. I was tempted to go over there in the gym. You know, over there in the gym, there is this cardboard cutout of Bethlehem, okay, that Terry made for the children's thing, and, and it's old little town of Bethlehem, and when we got to the line in, in the song, how still, I was going to knock it over. 
just to see if you would laugh, okay, if you were awake, if you were keeping up here, okay, okay, I, you need to, come on, okay, the front row's getting it, the rest of you are sitting there going, oh, listen to those women in the front row cackling, okay. A few years back, actually on December 10th, 2010, one of the world's prominent, prominent rabbis made a remark which sticks in my mind every time we come to worship at Christmas. The rabbi said, when it comes to the battle for Christmas, Christians have lost. Now the rabbi's talking about what the world does with our holiday. I mean, we're celebrating the birth of Christ, and if you watch the Hallmark Station, they're all in love with Santa Claus, okay? Everybody's marrying Santa Claus's son on the Hallmark Station at Christmas time, every other day, okay? Or they're finding a prince. I did not know that there were so many unmarried monarchs in the world until I watched the Hallmark Station, okay? Now, the rabbi's talking about what the world does with Christmas, and he says that we're losing but I have news for the distinguished rabbi. He stopped reading before he got to the end of the book. Had he read to the end of the story, the rabbi would know that in the end, we Christians not only win the war for Christmas, we win the war. See, 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, came to earth as a little tiny baby boy. He was still the Son of God. In every way, He was fully God. He, but He took upon Himself human form and came to earth to pay our debt and to set us free. Having taken upon Himself my sin and your sin. He paid the price. He died. So that we could live free of sin and free from the fear of death. He died and was buried. He lay in death's grip for three full days. But folks, death could not hold its prey. He tore the bars away. Up from the grave He arose. He returned to His place in heaven where He is seated at the right hand of the Father. But at the end of time, in the fullness of time, He will return to earth to claim His own. And when He comes, He will put all powers and all kingdoms under His control. Things will be ordered as they should be ordered, and those of us who have been waiting for Him will reign with Him forever and ever. Amen. In the end, we win the War. Having read to the end of the book and knowing what the rabbi does not, that we win the war, not only the battle for Christmas, but the whole war, fills me with exceeding great joy. And I hope it does you too. We have nothing to fear. In the end, we win the war. Now joy, in fact, exceeding great joy, is what Christmas is all about. Three times in the Christmas story, we are told that the characters in the story were filled with great joy, exceedingly great joy. The first person in the Christmas story to be filled with joy was Mary. Her part in the story is recorded in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 20, uh, 56. Mary was just a girl, in my mind now that I've gotten older, a little girl, at most 16 years old. She was engaged to be married to a respectable man, a carpenter, who was probably some years older than was she. Maybe even as old as 30. 
One night, when Mary was sleeping, she was awakened by an angel. The Bible tells us that it was the archangel Gabriel who was sent to Mary. And when Mary saw Gabriel, she was overwhelmed by his resplendent beauty and was filled with fear. The Bible says that she was scared to death. And who wouldn't be frightened? He told her that she would bear God's son, Israel's Messiah. Now, at first, Mary questioned the angel's words. How can it be, as you have said, she said, since I am still a virgin? But the angel told her not to sweat the details. He said, dear girl, nothing, I repeat, nothing is impossible with God. God. And then he gave her the sign that would confirm the truth to her. He said that her cousin, Elizabeth, an old woman who was barren, that is unable to have children, was pregnant too. Nothing is impossible. I repeat, nothing is impossible for God. So Mary packed up and went to Elizabeth and found her pregnant just as the angel said she was. And then Mary said, My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. She was filled with exceeding great joy and she worshipped God. Now before we move on, notice the pattern. First, Mary was afraid. She was afraid of what she could not understand and was unable to comprehend. She was pregnant and she had not been with a man. What would it mean? How would all of this affect and effect her life? But as she entered into God and God's plan for her life, she discovered His goodness and His faithfulness. She discovered that God loved her with a deep and abiding love that even she could not imagine. And knowing God more deeply, even if not fully, filled Mary with joy. So Mary was filled with joy. But joy is not a noun in the language of the Bible. It is a verb. It's not something we have. It is something we do. So, because she was filled with joy, Mary could not contain herself. Mary worshipped God. See, worship is the overflow from a heart that is filled with joy. Mary could not contain herself. She was so happy with God and all that God had in store for her that her heart overflowed and she worshipped Him. Now, Now look at it. Look at the pattern. Mary was afraid. Mary was filled with joy. Mary worshipped God. Now, the second group of people in the story of Christmas who were filled with joy was the shepherds. Their part in the story is found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 to 20, the very passage which Peter read in your hearing only a few moments ago. They were out in the field watching their sheep. It was late at night. Suddenly, the sky flooded with light, and an unnamed angel greeted them. The Bible says that this sudden heavenly appearance scared them to death. Peter asked me, could he please use the King James phrase, which he did not. They were sore afraid. They were so afraid, it hurt. They were terrified by the angel. And then the angel explained to them what had happened in Bethlehem. And invited them to go to Bethlehem and to find the Christ child. The angel's words to the shepherds 
were, I bring you news of great joy. Now listen to me. <laughs> if the shepherds had just stood there shaking in their boots sore with fear, if the shepherds had not accepted the angel's invitation to go find the Christ child, if the shepherds had not entered into God and God's plan for them, they would never have discovered the joy of which the angel spoke. But they did go to Bethlehem and they did find the child and they were filled with exceeding great joy. Now take note of the pattern again. First, the shepherds were afraid. Afraid of what they did not know and could not understand. But when they entered in and accepted the angel's invitation, they found exceeding great joy. And then, they worshipped God. Is it getting through? Are, are you beginning to see it? Do you see the pattern as it relates to you even now, today? Even in this day in which we live, with all of the knowledge we have and all that we can see through the television and the computer and all of those modern things, people are still afraid. We still fear what we do not know and what we cannot understand and comprehend. And because of what we see and all we know, we are afraid to trust God and to enter fully into God's plan for us. It's hard for us because God wants us to act out of our faith and not out of our knowledge. He wants us to Trust Him. But our fear keeps us from coming in, into a full relationship with Him. Our fear keeps us from trusting God completely. But when we do at last come in, we find God full of love, arms wide open, forgiving and faithful, just as Mary and the shepherds found them. And then, because of God's love and faithfulness, we are filled with exceeding great joy. And when we know that joy, we worship Him. We worship Him in spirit and in truth for we will know Him as Father and as God. Loving, faithful, forgiving, arms wide open. So where are you today? Are you trembling at the threshold of fear? Afraid of what you cannot see or comprehend or perhaps afraid of what you do see and think you understand? Afraid to step fully into God's plan for your life? Perhaps the thing which looms in front of you is the very thing which makes you unable to step fully into God's plan. Worried and fearful, but oh, step in deeper and you will find God. Arms wide open. His love for you beyond measure. Step into God's plan for your future and you will know exceeding great joy.
We'll invite you to stand and join us as we sing. wonder, I'm going to be really blunt now, you get ready. Do you ever wonder why people stay home on Sunday and do not come to worship God? <laughs> it's because they have allowed themselves to become overwhelmed with fear. Fear of what they can see or what they don't see. What they will see. You know what? If this was yesterday, how many would have stayed home, even those who are here today, out of fear of the weather? Now, I'm not saying it wouldn't have been wise to stay home, but even so, it's fear which keeps us from entering into Worship. Okay? What fear does is capture our attention upon the frightening and it steals from us our joy. We get so bound up in the circumstances that we face that we allow them to blot out our Joy. Just step into God's plan. Resolve to trust Him as God and Father. And you will find exceeding great joy. And when you do, your heart will overflow. In worship. Now we're going to conclude our worship in this room. Hopefully it doesn't stop in our hearts. And when we go forth from this place, we're going to stay filled with joy. And if we do, it will overflow in worship. The ushers are going to come and receive your gifts. Barbara's going to come and lead us in a closing song. She's there. We're going to get refreshments. We're going to come back here and we're going to meet. Don't forget. Okay? Remember. Okay? 
Remember, step in, experience joy, worship. of earth on a course unknown, bearing gifts from afar, hoping, praying, following yonder star, silhouette of a caravan painted against the sky, wise men Treasure in my 